Yes. Yes, we made it. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, lovely people. I am literally pumped right now because this is a very first for me as well. I wanted to kick off this member spotlight for you to hear from members directly. I really wanted uh, to create a space where beautiful members like Will, and I'm going to get you to introduce yourself in a moment, have the chance to actually share here live on camera with our group, with um, people who would like to know what the hype is all about and what's actually going on behind the scenes once you do decide to move forward in your healing journey. So I ask Will for so many reasons. First of all, Will, you've got such a special place in my heart and I am in awe in awe of your journey, of your healing, of the actions that you have taken for you to show up so continuously. And last but not least, you were our very first, one of the two first male uh, contestants, I should say, <laughs> <laughs> of our retreat. And uh, yeah, so I'm going to hand over to you and maybe you want to share a little bit about you. Welcome and thank you so much for stepping up as the first person. Thank you so much, Marie, for having me. I'm, I'm honoured to be here. I my name is Will. I live in Sydney, Australia, in Potts Point, in in beautiful sunny today Potts Point. I uh, have been a part of the family, the Loving Life After Loss family, for about eighteen months now. Wow! And uh, yeah, it it's been I think back back to the beginning, and actually I can't remember much of it. <laughs> I, think, <laughs> I think for most people going through grief. You know, it's it's dark clouds. So I, all I can remember is finding you, and um, and you know, I think now to where I'm at today, where the sun is actually physically shining, and it's you know shining inside of me. So thank you for having me. Oh, thank you. I, I love that. I love the beginning of all of it because when I just came down uh, to my office this morning, I thought how picture perfect. The sun is shining. I love it. I actually even took a selfie because I'm like, woo! I haven't seen the sun for so long. So. It is very true, you know, this whole picking people up. For me, the biggest thing in Loving Life After Loss is picking people up from where they're at. Like really, um, you know, I did a live on Monday about the meet me at the edge of the rabbit hole. I personally, after I've done my healing, and healing is ongoing mostly, but after I've done the, the thickness of it and I've come out of this whole deepest pain, I knew that I didn't want to go back there. So whenever I meet people who come from this really dark place, from the thickness of it, I literally do that whole meet me at the edge of the rabbit hole. I'm going to help you out there. I'm going to, you know, pull my hand down as far as I can, but I'm not coming down there because I know how dark it is. I'd rather have you up here, if that makes sense. And I believe we've met at the edge of that rabbit hole because you were ready to come out. Can you share a little bit about that? Because I think the most important part for people is, that they often feel like, am I even ready? I'm not really sure where to start. And I'd love for you to share that from your perspective, because I always share mine. So people know about that. But what was your perspective of that experience? Um, you know, just to share a little bit about my story too. Over two years ago, my partner of 10 years uh, died in a, a horrific accident. And, uh, you know, when, when you lose someone very suddenly, it's, it's almost like your life stops everything as you know it stops and after that period you know you go through the period of funerals identifying bodies dealing with you know in-laws dealing with everything you know and and through that period you do also get an enormous amount of love mm -hmm. and that support is there and my family and my friends and uh, they were wonderful. We were in the midst of COVID too, which made it extraordinarily yeah. hard. My yeah. partner was French, so his family couldn't come out from France. So mm -hmm. I was really left to deal with everything, but my friends really stepped up. But like anyone, I think who goes through this, you realize that that all sort of fades away. And all of a sudden you're sort of on your own again. Mm -hmm. And um, I was they suggested that I see a psychologist and I started seeing a psychologist and I, I have bipolar, um, bipolar one quite badly. So I'm, I take medication for that, but they put me on other medications as well to deal with this. Yeah. I wasn't sleeping and so forth, but I just realized I wasn't getting any better. And if anything, I was getting worse. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. And, you know, there were days, Marie, when um, I didn't get out of bed. Um, there were days and days and days I didn't shower. Um, I didn't even have the energy to brush my teeth. Mm. And the people around me were very concerned, but, you know, there's only, you know, so much they could do. But I was slipping into this really deep, dark hole. And uh, about 18 months ago, I, um, and I, I don't like to say I tried to kill myself, but I took too many of my medications because I wanted the pain to stop. Yeah. And I nearly killed myself. And, um, you know, we spoke to my doctor. It was a really scary, horrible time. And everyone was really worried that I wanted to take my life. And I, what I really wanted to say was, I just want everything to stop. <laughs> yeah. And um, so I, I, I got online and that's where I found you. <laughs> um, and I, 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 and, you know, I just, I just, I just joined a group, this group. I can't even remember what it was. It was a group. And then you and I connected and we had our first meeting and it was like, I'd met my angel. Oh, thank you. And I, um, and, uh, I took that first step mm. and uh, I tell people this, I say that, you know, I, I faltered so much in the beginning, like a lot of people going through anything like this. I, I just, I wanted to give up all the time because I just didn't have the energy. I didn't yeah. have the will to, to, to do it. I didn't have the energy to get up, but you kept at me. You kept reconnecting at me yeah. and um, you saved me. And uh, then I joined the blank canvas program. And it was, you know, I think eight to 10 weeks, uh, twice a week with a group of people I didn't know, all sharing something that we'd been through together. Mm. And it changed my life. It changed my life. And through that, uh, even those 10 weeks, oh my gosh, uh, there were things we talked about, you know, that we discussed, you know, what had happened, happened, how I chose to see it, how I chose to respond to it was up to me. And I really took that really you know, that one the most powerfully because I couldn't change that he died. Yeah. That's who was no longer with me. But I was choosing to live in my grief. I mm. really was. And that's really hard for some people to hear when they're grieving. They're like, oh, no, I, I'm not living in it. I don't want to. Yeah. We are living in it. And each day we're, we're enabling it. And I just had to have the strength to say, I don't want to do this anymore that, you know, Matthew wouldn't want me to do this. He, he wouldn't, he'd be kicking me. He didn't have a life anymore. He'd be kicking me if I wasn't living mine. Yeah. So I finished life after uh, the blank canvas uh, mm -hmm. and I really felt like I had taken some big steps. Yeah. And at the end of blank canvas, I don't know if you remember, but I talked at the end of blank canvas about meeting my current boyfriend. And I had just very, very vividly yeah. for you. Yes. I, I had just met him and I told the group whom I have such a special place in my heart for. Mm -hmm. uh, I told the group that I had there and everyone was like, wow, this is amazing. But who knows where it'll go? You know, yeah. 10, 11 months later, we're still together and he's the man I'm going to marry. So oh, with bombs. I can't believe you said that on camera. I love it. <laughs> so, yeah, it, it was you're right. I, I, I was at the edge of it all ending. And I just realized that I had, I was at a crossroad. I could do this. Mm. You know, I could keep going to the psychologist, which was doing nothing. All due respect to psychologists, but talking about it every week was just doing nothing mm. or actively doing something every, twice a week in the blank canvas to make sure that I was working on my own recovery mm. and turning it from the words you always say to me, it's, it's not about grief. It's about happiness, healing. It's yeah. about healing. So um yeah focus dark, that's a yeah dark, that dark days then as we said it's, it's it's sunny and shining today so it is so suitable well I, I do want to pick up one point that you just made because I find it very very important and I I feel also um you know out of fairness what you just said to the psychologist I, I do want to put a little disclaimer here if you don't mind because I have had now multiple people come to me and said, I got so much more out of working with you than I ever got in years of psychology. I do want to say there's a time and place for everything, you know, like I myself have been seeing a psychologist uh, for about four, uh, yeah, for about four months after Rob died. And she was a lifesaver for me. She was exactly what you just said. You know, she was my 
earth angel I was like oh my god she was so um I love that I met her and uh, a lot of people in the group know her Emily she came for interviews quite a few times uh, in the first year of loving love after loss and now through um Rob Stad passing and us being in the room with him when he died holding space for him it re-triggered a lot of things for me and I always say you know when you heal and you have probably experienced it too because we, we're going to talk about the retreat in a minute as well and why you chose after the black canvas to then come to the retreat and what the differences were maybe we can talk about that a little but why I'm saying that is um, I healed so much in my life, you know, otherwise I wouldn't be able to do this and to hold space for so many people here in the group. Yet there were levels that came back to me where I'm like, okay, this is the next level now. There's another layer to that. And, and I look at it, for me, grief is a visitor. Every now and then it comes and there's something else. And I actually embrace it now. It might sound funny, but I really embrace it now when it comes. And those triggers, when they came, I'm like, oh, I felt it. I felt anxiety. I never deal with anxiety. It was something really new to me. So I thought I'm going to go back and see a psychologist. So for me, there's a real space for that as well. Um, but there are two different things that we offer. And I love how hands-on the tools are that we deliver there in, in the programs, in the retreat. And um, I'd love to come back to your story actually now and say, um, what made you decide then? You know, you've done the blank cameras, you came out like with you've you've changed so much. I watched you in those eight weeks, I watched you transform, I watched you go through the steps and really actively use them. And that was really beautiful. I also love the group, how the group went from, you know, a group of strangers to becoming such close friends, actually, and the connections that were formed there. I love that when that happens. What made you decide though to then go? and come to the retreat as well, because we do offer different things there. So I'd love to hear from uh, your perspective. I, I'm also a member of NA. So I, I attend my NA meetings regularly. And mm -hmm. there's there's a, a big part of the NA process, which is about what we call service, mm -hmm. giving back. And um, I have to say that I did want to go come along to be able to be a part of the group, to be able to provide a little bit of, I hate to use the word inspiration because that's not what it is. It's just... That's how it is. <laughs> you <are> absolutely <laughs> inspiration. <laughs> but that um, you can get there and you will get there. Yeah. And, um, you know, on top of that, you know, at, at the retreat, you know, we I worked with some just amazing people that are all at different levels of, of their healing process mm -hmm. and um, I also met a lovely lady gay that I'm going to be friends with forever yeah. I met a, I met a, a soulmate a kindred spirit and um, and we connect you know a few times a week now just to touch base oh, and, beautiful. I love that yeah <laughs> and I'm enjoying so much watching her healing process mm -hmm. and since the retreat Marie she has just really you know sort of blossomed yeah. And so, you know, there is there is a certain part of being a part of a community. And I will now. Actually, my my partner said to me, Well, how long do these go on for? Mm -hmm. And I said to him, Well, forever probably. Mm. And he was like, Oh, you know, I think sort of thinking, when will you be over Matthew? Not mm -hmm. that he was in any way threatened, but mm -hmm. when does it, you know? And I said, I, you know, I don't, I'll never get over Matthew. But going forward, it's actually about helping other people, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. and that helping you in many ways. Oh my gosh, Marie, we talked, we didn't just talk about Matthew in blank canvas and the retreat. We talked mm -hmm. about everything. Mm -hmm. We talked about fathers and mothers and work and, you know, <laughs> you know, a sort of a whole spectrum and a, and a whole, you know, sort of, what, what would you say, like a, a piece of pie that yeah. makes up your life. And sometimes you get it so much. Every area of your life, yeah. really. When you live through an adversity like that, your life changes. And, and I want to say that as well, because so many people go through this, oh, my life will never be the same. Yet they often say it from a victimhood perspective. And I say that with all due respect, because I've been there, I've done that. I know what it feels like. You know, it's not, uh, I'm not having a go at anyone. I totally get that when people feel that. Yet again, it comes back what do you, to what you said at the beginning, you know, it's what we make of it is what makes all the difference. Because yes, it's an absolute true statement. 
And I love this neutralizing space, you know, to look at it as an as is statement and not put any judgment on it. It's not good. It's not bad. And most people would say it's bad. You know, somebody died. Well, of course, I'm not going to say, oh, yay, somebody died. Yet look at it from a neutral perspective. My life will never be the same. Yes, absolutely correct. And adversity changes your life. It's like a complete fork in the road, you know, and it's just your life goes down a completely different path. Yet what you make of it can be so beautiful and it's really up to you the opportunities there every single day so there was some there was some times during blank canvas that um you said things and and i really you know under my, <laughs> under my uh, quietly to myself i i thought oh god what's she saying you know, I let me feel my grief. Let me feel sad. You know, I am sad and I'm always going to be sad and he's gone. He's just gone. <laughs> and, you know, these then during the process is, you know, choosing how to look at how to look at it. And like you said, not being almost a victim in my grief, which is what I was. I'm not talking about anyone else here. I, I liked where I was. I didn't you know. I didn't like what it was, but I was comfortable where I was. Yeah. I was comfortable yeah. handfuls of pills and being sad and, you know, rejecting everyone. I was comfortable there and I could have stayed there. If I hadn't have found the groups, I probably, probably would have stayed there for, I might even still be there. So. Mm. Wow. It, it is such an incredible journey when I look at you back then and, and today it's just so beautiful. You know, I, uh, just went back we, we did this really beautiful video out of um, your feedback you know at the end of the group I asked everybody if they would be okay to actually for me to share that because I really wanted people to not come on camera and go like okay you know I went to Maurice blank cameras and this is what I get out of it I wanted this to be raw and real so in the feedback because the sessions are always live streamed into our little blank canvas group so it's just for the group nobody else to see it and I actually thought this is so raw and real. And I took the highlights that I felt weren't too personal about the story and asked you guys, would you be okay if I share that? I shared it with everyone and everybody said, absolutely, go and share it. I want other people to learn and to know about it. So we actually just started sharing snippets of that uh, in the last couple of days. I'm not sure if you saw it in a group or not. And the last two were actually about you. And I didn't tell my VA that it's you who's coming live. It just happened to be you. <laughs> and I thought, this is so picture perfect. It's almost like a, a sneak preview for, you know, Will's member spotlight. So, and there was this one thing where you said, um, you came as a broken bird to the to the group, you know, and now I just look at you fly and soar. And it's just really beautiful the before and after. Um, I would love for you to share some highlights of, of the before and after. What do you feel were the most important turning points for you throughout your old journey? And it doesn't have to be any of the programs, but just in terms of, you know, people reaching out to you or anything, what were the most important highlights for you that you feel contribute the most to where you're at today? What, what the groups did for me, I, I'm the sort of person that I need to actively do things, mm -hmm. which is why, again, nothing against psychology and psychiatry because I've worked with that with my bipolar, no problem. Yeah. But I actually needed to do the activities. So I needed to set myself the activity and I got so much out of it. I have, you know, my journals from, from both mm -hmm. my canvas and the retreat and I redo those things. Oh, and, well, you know, and I, yeah. And I use them again, not even just with, with my, my process with Matthew, but I yeah. use them in, in, you know, and I even use them with my staff as well. <laughs> I should have yeah, staff from you. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, and, and I think another another thing that I, I really um, got out of it um, was the idea that it's a it's a journey that may never end. Yeah. So and I'm I'm actually I, I'm happy with that because yeah. I'm a better person now. I'm a better partner. I'm a better son. I, I'm and it, I it took the what I went through with Matthew for that to happen. I, if I could change everything and Matthew was still here. Uh, there is no doubt, but mm -hmm. I evolved and grew so much after he died. And um, I like myself now. I like myself so much better. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I really do. And um, there was something that just came up for me that I wanted to say or ask, and now it's just gone. I was so sucked into your story okay. that I forgot what came up for me. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I think, oh, 
I'm not really sure if you want to share. Um, I'm just going to say one word and it's up to you if you if you want to or not. But uh, the cult word is facial. Uh, my salon? Yes. Yeah. If, if you're open to share it. You don't ah, have to yes, yes, yes. So um, I worked a lot on, you know, when, when uh, Matthew and I had a business together, we had a beauty salon together and we also had a important distribution company. When Matthew died, the last time I saw him was in the beauty salon. And um, after he died, I didn't step, I, I, went, I went back in about a month after and I had um, an anxiety attack like I'd never experienced before. Like I was actually having a heart attack and actually had to crawl basically to the door. And I didn't go back in. Mm. And I never went back in my own beauty salon because I couldn't. Such memories of us building it together. Everything, you know, we saw each other every single day in this place. Then um, during, during uh, the, the new Happy Healing Group, mm. you discussed, we discussed that maybe I should pop on some nice music, get a kombucha tea and open the front door and sit there, which I did. I must look like an idiot sitting there, bopping away to Kylie. <laughs> and, uh, and then, you know, I sort of put that on the back burner a little bit. I had done that mm. and I had to go in. One of my staff, a couple of my staff um, needed some leave and I had to go in. Yeah. And I thought, okay, I, I can do this. So I, I got my kombucha tea and I put my earphones in and I, I walked in and it was almost like I had like this, I was like one of the supermen. I had like these fierce, like, like um, a warrior thing here. And I walked through and I felt, okay, I, I'm back. And this is my place. And I definitely have, you know, memories, but I also have memories to make. Mm -hmm. And um, then you and I, we talked during Happy Healing Mm -hmm. And I was in my salon and no one realized. No, I didn't even realize. <laughs> it took me a second, actually. <laughs> and then we spoke about it. And I was like, guess where I am? And you were like, no, my gosh. <laughs> I tell everyone I couldn't go. I Just even the thought of being in there. I would have flashes of seeing him, even the way he smelt, the way he sounded, um, you know, everything about it. But mm -hmm. I, I had the strength to be able to go uh, into it. And... Yeah to make it mine again, which I loved. You know, I just, oh, it was just, I could kiss you just for that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so happy because I remember, like it was only last week, um, I think, in the yeah, Happy Healing week. sessions yeah. that we do. Uh, happy Healing is our group uh, program, by the way. It's like just a membership where you can join for fortnightly, uh, really catch-ups, accountability sessions, I call them, to just stay in that healing path. I really love it. Um, and when you said that, it really took me a second. I was like, guess where I am in the salon? I was like, click, click, click. I was like, oh my God, the salon. And I was like, oh my God, oh my God. And I remember like the whole group, everybody was so excited. By the way, just when you were uh, telling that, Alison um, started watching us too. So hi, Alison, thank you for being here. And uh, yeah, it, it's just so lovely also to, to see the group supporting you and, uh, and seeing how excited they are for you that you that you went that step further, you know, that, that was a huge step in your healing journey and for you to own it with such joy as well, I should say, um, there is so much healing in that and I can see so much healing in you. And what I love is that you say um, that healing takes takes forever as it lasts forever, as it, it, it is a journey, it is a path. And what I love about that is that it's the direction we're heading you know and for me there's always like you know there's a direction of going back to grief or there's the direction of healing and on that path of healing grief can visit I'm happy for grief to visit I'm actually I mean it I'm now I now am happy when grief comes to visit me because it shows me how far I come how far I've healed and um, what there is still to discover about me and I actually really embrace it now because it has become part of who I am and um I actually wrote this very short uh, line the other day and it really stuck with me and it was, we hurt, we heal, we grow, we teach. And I feel this should be my new slogan because this is such a, this is such a path, you know, we hurt, we heal, we grow, we teach. And that's exactly what I see in you as well. When you said, well, the main reason to come along um, to the retreat was to inspire others. And yet again, you came out with so much more than just that, you know, you came out with a soulmate, you came out even further healed, you came out um, 
such a beautiful person and I really have to say from the bottom of my heart I love you Will I'm so <laughs> glad that our paths have connected and have crossed and um, are still aligned and I love having you in the group you are such an inspiration I really mean it and so many people look up to you now for the healing and when you think of how you looked up to other people when you right. first came in and now you're like this shining right. example like shining so brightly it makes my heart sing it's just really beautiful well, I, I love being a part of it. I, mm. And that's what it is. It's a, you know, a group of people. We, we all come from such different backgrounds and yeah. we're so different, but yeah. we're really the same. We're mm. really the same. You know, we share one thing and um, that's a very powerful thing that brings us together. Yeah. And that's, I, I don't want to give it up. When you talked about happy healing, I was like, yeah. <laughs> I remember you saying that I was actually driving from the city home I remember when we had this phone conversation you're like count me in <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> if well, I had my way we'd live in the retreat yeah but 20 12 months of the year do you know what I mean just commute oh, from the retreat group <laughs> that would be amazing I'd love that I just want to quickly read out one a statement because Terry is watching as well and she just said love seeing you both laugh together and Will nearly bouncing out of his seat into <laughs> my screen. Woohoo! Yes, Terry, absolutely. Hello, Terry. Um, yeah. <laughs> Terry, well, on my list, I'll get back to you regarding uh, a member spotlight. So I also want to have uh, Terry here on camera too because she's been with us for quite some time, actually longer than you as well, Will. So, Will. Happy healing. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I can't thank you enough for showing up here because you showing up here is, you know, you're really a trailblazer here. You're just so beautiful to step up and be the brave first one to come to the member spotlight. I want to really thank you for that. It takes a lot of courage to share your story here on screen, but uh, you also share so much hope and inspiration with who you are and what you do and, you know, the healing that you share here. And before we go, is there any last words that you would like to share with people that might be sitting on the edge at the moment going, is this for me? Is this not? Should I do this? Should I move forward? Because we all know the hesitation. We all know that it can be quite confronting to step into a program like that with people that you don't know. So maybe you can share some, uh, yeah, how that felt for you and what it could be for you. A, a journey just starts with one step. Mm -hmm. And if that one step is a one-on-one -on -one with you, mm. or if that one step is reaching out to a member yeah. um, and uh, reaching out to me, oh, <laughs> um, then, then that's all it is. You don't have to worry about the second step. Yeah. You don't have to worry about the first step. Yeah. And, um, and then trust in the rest of it. So that's, yeah. You're so beautiful for saying that because I often say as well, you know, if you want to talk to a member about this who's done it, uh, you know, I had a couple of people that volunteered that said, yeah, absolutely, you know, uh, please pass on my name and I'm happy to talk to them because it's often so much easier to talk to somebody who's actually done it rather than to the facilitator because unfortunately when you're the facilitator, there's often as well, of course you want me in the program because, you know, you you get the reward for it, but it's just, it's not about that. For me, the biggest reward is seeing people like you on the other side, being healed and walking far towards, uh, you know, further along the healing journey and uh, being such a big part of it really honors me. And it makes my heart sing. I have to say that again, it really makes my heart sing to see you like that. So thank you so much for coming on with me. And for anybody who would like to chat to me for a one-on-one, -on -one, I will put the link uh, in the comments below so we can chat about that if the blank canvas could be for you. We will be starting the next blank canvas on the 31st of October. So it's not long to go now. And for anybody who would like to chat to Will about it, let us know and we can connect you. So thank you. So much love to you. Mwah! Can't wait to see you again. And uh, bye, everyone. Thank you for watching. See ya.